Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, welcome to our Facebook Live Mass on this, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Uh, we're now in Passion Tide, getting much closer to Holy Week and Easter. This Mass is offered for all people of the parish, especially as we rededicate ourselves, our parish and our country as Mary's dowry. Father Rajesh is also celebrating Mass today privately for two intentions, two Masses, Joe Driscoll for the repose of their soul and for Nellie Wilson for the repose of their soul also. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you and you will live. And I shall resettle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness, for this we revere you. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. My soul is waiting for the Lord, I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord, more than watchmen for daybreak. Break, daybreak. Let the watchman count on daybreak, and Israel on the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption, Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. 
With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possessed the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his Spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was ill. It was the same Mary, the sister of the sick man Lazarus, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, yet when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, Let us go to Judea. The disciples said, Rabbi, it is not long since the Jews wanted to stone you. Are you going back again? Jesus replied, Are there not twelve hours in a day? A man can walk in the daytime without stumbling, because he has the light of the world to see by. But if he walks at night, he stumbles, because there is no light to guide him. He said that and then added, Our friend Lazarus is resting. I'm going to wake him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he is able to rest, he is sure to get better. The phrase Jesus used referred to the death of Lazarus, but they thought that by rest he meant sleep. So Jesus put it plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, because now you will believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, known as the twin, said to the other disciples, Let us go too and die with him. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathise with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that, even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is to come into this world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in a low voice, The Master is here and wants to see you. Hearing this, Mary got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village. He was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were in the house sympathising with Mary saw her get up so quickly and go out, they followed her, thinking that she was going to the tomb to weep there. 
Mary went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who followed her, Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave of a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand round me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, hear, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The fall of humanity means that we're constantly being pulled in two directions, towards heaven, but also back down towards earth. But with God's grace, we resist what seems an overwhelming temptation to give in to our disordered passions. And instead, we focus on God's way. We unite our passions to the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. To do this, we need the Holy Spirit to constantly bring all our thoughts, our words and our deeds into line with God's commandments. In everything we do and everything we say, we allow the Holy Spirit to teach, guide, correct and inspire us, helping us to remain vigilant against the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are those desires that anchor us to this world, eating away at our souls, just as the worm will eat away at our body after death. Justified by grace, a Christian hopes for their future resurrection. Ezekiel's vision of the dry bones reminds the Christian that we are a un unity of body and soul. Our redemption and the new life that God will give to his people must involve that revitalization of the body, as well as that immortality that's given to our souls. Certainly, God who created us out of nothing, who created us from the earth, animating us with the Holy Spirit, can raise us to life after death. Christ lives in us, and so we too may share in a death like his. And if Christ is present, then so is the Blessed Trinity, and so we need to remain in that state of grace to keep present so noble a guest. Jesus has the power over death, and to bolster his disciples' faith, he waits until the fourth day before going to Bethany to be sure that Lazarus, his friend, is dead. Jesus loves us. He loves us just as he loves Lazarus. He will weep for us when we commit sin, especially serious sin, 
because he sees that divine life slipping away from us. Martha knows that Jesus has the power of life and could have prevented Lazarus's death had he been present. Jesus, however, lets Martha know that he is the resurrection and the life. He has this power over death as well as over life. Jesus calls Lazarus by name. Although he is dead, he has kept his identity, for he continues to exist. Remember, God is not God of the dead, but he is God of the living, for to him all are in fact alive. And we say at funerals in the preface, we say, for a Christian at death, life is changed and not ended. It is a step to eternal life which culminates with the resurrection of the body on the last day. Lazarus comes out bound in his burial garments, whereas when Jesus will come out from the tomb on Easter Sunday, he has wrapped his garments very neatly and he has left them to the side. It's as if he will never need them again. And so in these last few days, of Lent as we get closer to Holy Week. Let's continue to focus on the cross because by being at the cross we pass over with Jesus into the new life that the resurrection brings. So instead of the Nicene Creed, especially during Lent and Easter time, the baptismal symbol of the Roman Church, the Apostles' Creed, may be used. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption, and so we pray. For the Church in England and Wales, may we rededicate our communities as a dowry for Mary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the people of God, May we use this time to better form our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our country, may we return to the faith of our fathers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our leaders, May they guide us through this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are self-isolating, may they have the comfort of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick, may they soon be healed and return to good health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we rededicate ourselves, our parish and country to Mary, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty Father, we know that you are God of the living, and so we ask you to hear and answer our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this part of the Mass on a Sunday, we'd normally pass the collection basket around. Obviously, we can't do that. Uh, but the diocese has created an online collection basket, a Just Giving page, and you will find the details on our parish Facebook page. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to a new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deo Sabaiot, Pleni sunt celia terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth, 
and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask your almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, 
and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Anus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Uh, stay up to date with uh, the parish on this parish Facebook page, also on our website, stmmbexhill.co.uk, stmmbexhill.co.uk. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gifts of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. So as we rededicate ourselves and our parish and our country as Mary's dowry, uh, we're going to pray this morning. Uh, an adapted version of the Angelus, uh, specially created for today. It's called the Angelus Promise. The Angelus Promise is a spiritual exercise created to assist us to embrace the message of Our Lady as expressed in the Angelus. It invites us to share in the joy of the Annunciation by following Mary's openness to God's call through her faith-filled yes. Through your own faith-filled yes, the Lord will work wonders in your life. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. As God once chose Mary to become the mother of his son through the message of an angel, so he chooses us this day and invites us through the ministry of the church or the example of another to seek and do his will at any moment of our lives. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Mary's response to her invitation, let it be done to me according to thy word, opened her heart to God's grace and all things became possible. Let our yes today take away fear as we embrace God's will and like Mary, ponder these things in our hearts. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. At a moment in history, Mary's faith-filled yes conceived him, first in her heart, which then led to the birth of our Saviour. Through accepting him in our hearts, enable us to recognise our role in bringing Christ to our brothers and sisters today. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, most holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. And let us pray. O Holy Mother of God, pray for us and assist us as we dedicate ourselves this day. Your yes at the Annunciation brought our Saviour Jesus into the world, and you invite us to contemplate the great mystery of the Incarnation, sharing your joy in announcing that the Word was made flesh and lived among us. May our yes this day open our hearts to serve our sisters and brothers in this your dowry, that they too may share our joy in the good news that God walks among us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the divine assistance remain with us always, and may the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Ave, Ave. Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria.